What's happening fam? Today we're gonna talk about what it's like to be a digital nomad and how that can help us in our lives. Because one of the things we talk about is that you want to be able to have something already going in terms of a business if you're gonna be making it on the continent of Africa. So we're gonna get started with that. We're gonna be talking to Rob. How you doing, Rob? Doing pretty good, pretty good, can't complain. That's good, that's good. So uh, would you, define yourself as a digital nomad? Yeah, I guess so. I think so. So I've been uh, working IT and I've been 100% remote since about 2016 and a digital nomad since 2019. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. Well, tell us, uh, just give us a little bit of background that you feel like sharing about yourself. Oh, uh, sure. Um, born and raised in Chicago. Uh, lived in Denver, Dallas, Orlando, you know, over the course of, you know, the most recent years, uh, started uh, my digital nomad journey in Central America. So mostly uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, made it down to Panama, wow. Colombia. Uh, never thought I'd end up in Africa. It was, you know, so every, I was basically focused on Central, you know, Central America, Caribbean, that, uh, during COVID, when the world shut down, basically the only place I could go with my American passport was uh -huh. Mexico and Africa. Gotcha. Okay. So went to Morocco, met some folks, mm -hmm. Egypt, ended up coming through Kenya, Tanzania, and ended up here in Zanzibar. Supposed to be here like three, four days, ended up here for a month. <laughs> that was uh, March of 21 and moved here in uh, November of 21. Oh, okay, okay. Now you say you started down in uh, Central America. How did you get started? What happened? Uh, I was working for a Canadian company at the time and we had Spanish language call centers in uh, Guatemala and El Salvador. So I'd have to go down there, you know, two, three times a year for work and got down there, enjoyed it. It's like, hmm, I never thought to explore this. So I would uh, go down there and stay for a month and, you know, bounce back and forth between El Salvador and Guatemala, then discovered the Tika bus system. So you could just hop on a bus and for like $8, go to Nicaragua or Costa Rica or whatever, and mm -hmm. just kind of roamed. Wow. Okay. So I haven't heard you say it was part of a plan. Nope. It was not a plan. I just uh, realized once I was 100% remote, it didn't matter whether I was in Florida, Central America, Africa. Mm -hmm. So I just put my Mac in a backpack and just go. <laughs> and oh. as long as I have reliable Wi-Fi, I can work from anywhere. Wow, okay, okay. That's pretty interesting. So how would you describe your personality? I gotta ask you about that before we go back to mm -hmm. the countries you've been to. Um, do you think your personality lends itself more to that openness? I think so. Um, I like new experiences, I like seeing things, meeting people. You know, I like traveling. I'm real curious. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what's over there. <laughs> and they just go mm -hmm. check it out. So, you know, that's, uh, I'd say that that's probably the key to my, uh, you know, my personality traits that makes it work. Because I'm very adaptable, very, very cu curious, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I'm always trying to see, you know, is, a, a, is this a better place? Is it a more fun place? What's the difference between a Pacific Ocean beach versus an Atlantic Ocean beach versus an Indian Ocean beach and just bouncing from place to place is do you try do you try to stay in a particular place for a period of time because we've known you here for mm. over a year and this is the longest I've stayed in one place I would typically a month or two whatever yeah this is the only place I've stayed for a long time mm -hmm. okay all right yeah I kind of go where the, where the wind blows me is it one of those things where you um, and we may have talked about this over cigar or something before you have a base um, and you get to see the world from that base country or something like yeah, that. Yeah, typically. Yeah, I, I find a central location and just bounce around, you know, wherever the wind takes me from that location. Uh, before I became a digital nomad, I, I minimized my life. So everything I own at this oh, point, okay. uh -huh. everything I own at this point fits in two suitcases. Okay. So at any moment I can hop on a plane and go wherever I want to go. Uh, that's got to be critical right there. Oh, that yeah, little yeah. piece, that little nugget. Yeah, um, I can. That's probably the thing that's made it. Uh, I 
work for an international company. So, you know, my manager lives in Zurich. My vice president lives in Berlin. There is no office in Florida, which is where I was living when they hired me. So they don't care whether I'm in Florida or Zanzibar because it's not like I have to go into an office or anything like that. So I have that work flexibility Mm -hmm. and then just not having to maintain a car and a house and all these things in the States where I can just put things in a suitcase and go. Yeah. And I don't have no reason necessarily go back in a specific time. I'm just having that flexibility. Uh, The only difficult thing about here, I'd say, is the time difference. Because I support uh, most of my clients are on the east or east coast, okay. you know, Eastern time, Central time. So, so we're my, talking eight hours, eight hour time difference. Yeah. Uh, so my workday usually starts around three p.m. and goes to midnight, Monday through Friday. So what's a typical day for you like then? Because that's kind of a that's almost like the second shift. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. It's like I work straight second shift. Yeah. Uh, I you know get up when God wakes me up. <laughs> Uh-huh. You know, thankful he does. And he does, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> and as you've seen, you know, go on the rooftop of the pavilion and do my boxing. Mm-hmm. You know, do that a few days a week. Cook. Sometimes I'll go do excursions. You know, I'm a beach guy, so I'll, any excuse to get in the water, I'm going to uh-huh. do that. Uh, oh, hold yeah. on, hold on. This ain't got nothing to do with the interview, mm-hmm. but when you said cook, we I go, we ought to talk about this chili because I really <laughs> want I, I, I want to I miss some chili, okay? Done. So okay, okay, yeah. Done. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, that was critical right there. <laughs> yes, we're gonna. Hey, we were supposed to have Taco Tuesday at some point too. So. Oh yes, yeah, we yes, got to do yes. that. We okay. still got to schedule that too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. You know, cook. Uh, by three o'clock, I'm working, and mm-hmm. it, it, now of course it's interesting for my day to start at three, and the people I'm supporting are just getting up. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, they, let's say maybe you're going to lunch had a bottle of wine or whatever so now you're kind of slow ready to take a nap and they're drinking coffee hey how you doing yeah yeah oh okay <laughs> you know, it's like yeah you're a little bit too happy for it <laughs> do you have to deal with a lot of zoom calls and things like that yes yeah mm-hmm. How's uh, that? I, it's it's fine it doesn't mm-hmm. i uh it's been interesting uh back in december because i i've taken you know my webex calls and whatnot from the beach or from a restaurant and everyone else that i was working with was in a cold place you know they were in new york was in switzerland mm-hmm. so everyone's talking about how frigid it is i'm like yeah it's a frigid 87 degrees here <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> and that's a cool day here yeah <laughs> um so that's pretty incredible all right would you say i'm not asking you your personal business but in turn do you think you make more money by being a digital nomad uh I don't know. Because um, you said no, you, you don't have to worry about a car. You don't have to worry about. Um, I I have more money by being a, a digital. <laughs> that's a good answer. Um, I don't know that I necessarily make more money, but I definitely have more money. Yeah. Because it's uh, global tree uh, arbitrage is an amazing thing. So to earn USD and live in T shillings mm-hmm. is, is, you know, for example, all of my bills here are less than a third of my rent. Yeah. In Florida. Yeah. So in Florida is very expensive. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah. so whether I make more or not, I don't know. But having the flexibility to live in a lower cost place, I at the end of the day, I have more money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what about things like um, health insurance? Uh, mm, <clears throat> I try to avoid going to the doctor. <laughs> um, I've had a couple of things happen here and have had to use the Zanzibar medical system and it's been fine. Um, as you recall, right before my birthday, crashed oh, my yeah, bike. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, but it, it's been fine. I haven't had any problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't, I haven't needed surgery or anything like that. And, and then I'll typically, uh, you know, with this being a Islamic country and I'm not Muslim, I usually leave during Ramadan and I'll go back to the States and that's when I'll, you know, do my U.S. taxes, get an annual physical, take care of all of that stuff so mm-hmm. you know so that one time a year when i you know just got to get the machine checked out i usually just go back to the states and do that yeah yeah okay the um the thing i wanted to mention is for us our cpa said that um i think it's june or something like that living outside the united states on when we file our returns 
for U.S. tax returns. Um, just a something I can double check on or whatever. I don't know if that impacts you. Yeah, I have to, yeah, I have to check that. I mean, I've always done it in April, just or like okay. March, April. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I, I know I'm going to be there because it's Ramadan. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it just makes it convenient to just schedule everything in those 30 days. And, you know, go to the dentist, go to the doctor, file your taxes. How many yeah. times do you think that you might venture outside of Zanzibar here to uh, like during a year? Um, I leave probably six or seven times a year for varying lengths. Sometimes it's been as short as a week. One time it was for almost two and a half months, but mm -hmm. I always come back. The one thing that I, uh, that I'm trying to work on for this year is I have not explored East Africa as much as I've wanted. Oh, okay. You All know, right. so I'm trying to get to a couple more places. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I've in this region, I've only been, uh, here, mainland Tanzania, Kenya and Rwanda. So I'm like, I still have to make it to Uganda. I want to go, to, want to go to Mozambique this year at some point. Uh -huh. uh, I've been trying to get to Mauritius for a while, so I think I'm, I'll do one of my visa runs and, you know, and explore East Africa a little like bit more. It seems like Mauritius is uh, very digital uh, friendly. Yes, very. Di they actually have a digital nomad program. Yeah, uh, you can get a uh, if you have a digital job from someplace else, and you can show you're making. I think it's some small amount of money, it's like fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars a month. USD, really? Yeah, and you can get like a, a two year visa. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, if you if you swing over that way, we, we come check you out. For oh, sure. Definitely. Because Mauritius definitely. looks good on the videos, I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah. It's, I've heard it's a beautiful place and uh, one of the strongest passports in Africa. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, so mm -hmm. they, they're, they're doing a lot of building there. And mm -hmm. you said uh, their infrastructure is probably the best in East Africa. Okay. So yeah. it's definitely on my list for this year. And what about uh, South Africa? Oh. Uh, yeah, just haven't. It just hasn't pulled me yet. Yeah, yeah okay. Hasn't I, I've been told a bunch of times that I need to get to Cape Town, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, yeah, I haven't. Uh, just haven't ventured that way yet. Okay. Um, I typically look for beach places, so Joburg has no appeal to me. Yeah. I, I really don't try to go to cities much. You okay. Know, spent spent my whole life in cities. Uh huh. <laughs> so take me to the beach. Take me to the countryside. Something like that. Yeah. One thing we got to talk about is challenges. Now, honestly, mm -hmm. what kind of challenges have you had to deal with? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the time difference. Uh, yeah. You know, that's probably the number one. Uh, behind that um, is infrastructure, uh, internet, internet and electricity. Internet connection. Yeah. My, uh, I pay almost as much for my internet every month as I do for rent. And it, it's substantially higher and substantially slower than what mm -hmm. I got for the States. But yeah, it, the only way I can be here is to have reliable service. Yes. So I basically bought a business plan. OK. <laughs> so my Internet, you know, called up the provider and said, give me the fastest, most reliable thing you have. Yeah. And again, it comes with a price tag, but uh, it's cheaper at the end of the day than missing a day of work yeah. or having to leave here. Mm -hmm. You know, because I have unreliable uh, internet connection. Yes. Uh, electricity is probably a close second, but it, it it's gotten much better mm -hmm. over time. So when I first got here, there were probably power outages every day. Okay. And they would last a couple of hours. One was like nine hours or something like that. Okay. Uh, I have not seen that uh, in this past this past six months or so. Uh, there, I think there was one outage that was maybe two hours, but in general, it seems like if the power goes out, it's back up within, you know, five, ten minutes or something like that. Uh -huh. you know, so it's an inconvenience, but it doesn't really disrupt anything. Mm -hmm. So those are really the, I would say from a Zanzibar specific, it would be Internet and electricity. But I don't know how much of that is Zanzibar versus just island. Because it, uh, it's uh, every island I've been to has had struggles with power and the internet is slower, yeah. and, you know. So it's no different than being in Jamaica or Barbados, right? And, you know, and also challenges up in Rwanda too. Yeah, yeah with the 
the electricity, um, the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. What about um, intangibles like family, friends? Uh, you know, hit and miss. Uh, people worry about me because I'm on the other side of the world. And uh, the one funny thing is everybody forgets about the time change. So they'll, I've got many 3 a.m. phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Uh, made a lot of friends here. Um, I've invited a few friends from the States or, you know, various people who I've met traveling even mm -hmm. to come see me here. Um, I met my son for his birthday uh, in, Bar uh, in Barcelona uh, maybe two years ago. Oh, we've got to so, talk about that sometime. Okay, I want to. My wife wants know, to go there. I think. Yeah, he was. Uh, he's actually living in Thailand, uh, Taiwan at the time. Okay. And we just found a middle point because okay. he was going back to New York. And okay. Yeah, we just met in Spain. Uh, but you know, I s Facetime family, you know, friends and all that. As long as they don't do it at three in the morning. All uh, right. You know, but I usually pay him back by <laughs> calling them <laughs> at three in the morning. <laughs> do you? Um, have a network of digital nomads uh, or some kind of association or groups or something like that? Um, nah, they exist. Um, I haven't joined um, any of them at this point. I just, my network is just people I've met in traveling, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then, my, you know, my, my current job and my previous job were both for foreign companies. So I have, at this point, I have friends in Germany, Spain, you know, Switzerland, Canada, just all over the place. So uh, that tends to provide me a big enough network. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would you consider yourself uh, an extroverted kind of person? At times, it depends. Yeah. I, pref I definitely prefer small groups to just meeting a lot of people. Okay. But by the same token, um, when you're in a new place, you have to meet strangers and things like that. So you'll know where to go for things, how to, you know, because you can't just, well, you could figure it out yourself, but it, you're going to make a lot more mistakes and it's going to take you longer. So you have to be at least extroverted enough that you can engage with people, you know, engage with the locals. Yeah, because you got to know how to take care of your laundry. You got to know how mm -hmm. to take care of some utilities. And I still remember uh, when I first moved here, and my electricity went out and I had no idea, you know, because we just ran out of electricity. <laughs> and uh, because folks, we pay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every, yeah because the utilities here are prepaid. <laughs> yeah, prepaid. <laughs> uh, and when my power, you know, when I ran out of electricity, I, that's when I realized I have no idea how to uh, get electricity. Then my cooking gas was mm -hmm. finished. And I had no idea where to buy propane. Yeah. You know, just all these little <laughs> things. And yeah, if you don't have uh, if you don't have a network, you know, where you are, if you don't know people or you don't engage with the locals, mm -hmm. I didn't even know where to buy groceries. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just okay. little things. The grocery store wasn't even here yet. Yeah, because there wasn't a grocery store. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would end up wasting a lot of money because I bought all my meals. Okay. You know, I, I think I didn't cook for the first two months I was here. You know, I just didn't even know where to get groceries. Which is wild because you're an excellent cook. Yeah. So. so, but, you know, I, I like Swahili food, so. That's what I was going <laughs> to ask you if you did or didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so I didn't mind. I, you know, I ate a lot of palau and rice and beans and masala mm -hmm. beef. And, okay. And seafood here is really good, too, so. Okay. Well, you hit some some major things uh, to me. That business of the fact that you were you used the word minimalist <laughs> and uh, sh having your whole life in two suitcases or something like that. Um, you also talked about uh, some other important things. Is there like some kind of suggestion you'd have for anyone who would aspire? Uh, to be a digital nomad to try to make this life happen for them? Uh, the main thing is you got to know yourself. You got to know uh, how you want to live, you know, what's important to you. Because I think a lot of digital nomads, particularly ones that I've met from the States, have this, you know, I don't know whether they get it from Instagram or movies or whatever, but they have this image of what a digital nomad life is. 
and they will go from place to place to place expecting it to be just like the place they left Ooh, you know okay so yeah. people yeah. will get there are reasons not to like Zanzibar. I happen to love it, but there are reasons to not like this yeah, place. Yeah, we love it too. <laughs> One thing that's unfair is to not like it because it's not the U.S. Yeah. Or it's not Tulum, or it's not Paris, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or whatever. And getting rid of that mindset, I think, is the biggest thing. Nice, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Because what two things happen. You can get an unfair or distorted view of the place you are. And the other thing is you can end up in the expat bubble and it does and when you get into that bubble it doesn't matter whether you're in thailand zanzibar costa rica because you're with people just like you doing the things you're doing in an environment where you're not even in, interacting with the locals so you could be anywhere you know what would make yeah. that how would you know that you're in africa versus asia versus south america if you're only talking to other Americans, mm -hmm. you know, if you're only if you're eating the same food that you ate at home, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's you have to be ready to embrace that. Uh, embrace the place that you're going. Nice. I okay. say that's that's probably the biggest thing. Most of the people who I've seen fail fail for that reason. They oh, I want to go to Africa. Or I want to go to Asia. Mm -hmm. And they don't really know what living there means. So they run out of money because they're eating in restaurants all the time, or you know, little things like that, or taking taxis everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's so you have to know what's important to you. Is that can you find that where you're looking to go? You know, is this place a fit? Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I I love pole pole. You know, I like <laughs> I like it slow. I like the beach. Yeah. So when I was looking for a long-term place, that's what I considered. Do you have? Do I have access to beaches? And is it slow? I don't want to be in a big city, traffic jams, hustle and bustle. So that excludes, you know. So no, I'm not going to Ghana. I'm not. There are a bunch of places that were immediately excluded from the list mm -hmm. because either they big cities, no beaches, things like that. Mm -hmm. And Zanzibar for now, Zanzibar fits that bill, and so I'm here. Nice. Okay. All right. Is there any question that I did not ask you that uh, you, you think, wow, he didn't ask me this 20 minutes later. That would have been good. Hmm. That would have been a good one. Hmm. Um, we touched on it before, before the interview started. Yeah. What's that? American TV. American Sports. TV. Mm -hmm. Watching the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. How do you get, how do you stream, uh, you know, NFL games, NBA mm -hmm. games, <laughs> like yeah. that when you're, when you're uh, eight hours time difference. Yeah. No VPN. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so th those types of things. That's something that, uh, another thing I had, another adjustment I had to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And think of getting all hyped to throw a Super Bowl party and realizing that the Super Bowl is going to start at four in the morning. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, OK, we're going to have a Super Bowl breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. OK, well, that's it, I guess. Thank you, folks, for viewing. And we hope that you found some value in what we were talking about. Some of the things that Rob shared. If you did, please like share and subscribe. Thanks.